Hey guys, welcome back to Just Fixing Garage. I'm Justin. Uh, we're working on the Dart you've probably seen before. It's a 2014 Dodge Dart with the 2.4, uh, it's the SXT, Rally, whatever it might be. Uh, so we're doing front pads and rotors, and I just wanted to do as fast of a video as I could to show you everything you'll need to do this job and uh, how quickly you can do it, you know, um, and hopefully, you know, save yourself some money because, you know, with the economy how it is right now, everything's gotten expensive. So if you can do it yourself, save money from the dealer, go for it. So let's get into it. All right, guys, before you start the job, let me list out all the tools you're going to need. So from the beginning, you're going to need, uh, I don't have it sitting up here where I do, you know, something to get the wheel off, get the wheel off. Uh, I use a three quarter, but it's probably like a 19 or 21 or something. If you go metric, that fit it fine for me. Uh, then to take off the rotor bolt that holds it on, if it's still the factory one, it is a five millimeter Allen key. You're definitely going to want that. You're going to need a 14 millimeter socket in order to get the caliper off of the caliper bracket. And then you're either going to need an E20 or a 12.16 millimeter uh, socket to get the caliper bracket off of the car. And then some of the other miscellaneous stuff you need is obviously the ratchets to do all of this. Okay. You'll need torque wrenches if you want to torque everything to spec. I also have an anti-seize that I put under on the hub before the rotor goes on. I have a thing of brake grease that I used. I have a couple files for cleaning the caliper bracket, a brush for cleaning the hub and caliper bracket, a flathead for just prying off the old pads, a compression tool, but you could use a C-clamp or something. This is a really cheap, like under $10 tool that I like. Um, and then I have a hook that I use to hang the caliper up while I'm working. So this is everything I used. Every single thing you see here, see here should be everything I used. If I forgot anything, I'll let you know, but this is, this is it. Um, oh, I guess that's true. I did use some brake cleaner and some towels, but that's not really a tool. All right, so uh, that's what we're doing. So we're gonna get into the car and get it done. All right, guys, so we're gonna get into the car. The first thing you need to make sure you do is get the car up in the air safely. This can be with a hydraulic jack and a jack stand uh, or like a car lift and then have it on the, the stops, okay? So one big thing is don't get under the car just on a hydraulic jack, put a jack stand under it, all right? And then we're gonna end up taking off the wheel, which, you know, obviously you know that's coming. I'm using a three quarter size. It seemed to fit it pretty good. So I'm gonna zip all this off and then we'll get into the uh, actual work. And if you pay attention to the beginning, I list out all the tools in the beginning of the video before we start taking the wheel off. So just be sure to look at that and make sure you have everything on hand because I'm gonna go through this quick. I've already done the other side, so I know everything I'm gonna need. Alright guys, wheel is off, so what I'm going to suggest the next thing you do is take a look at your rotor and see if you have an Allen bolt holding the rotor in place. I suggest you get this out before you do anything with the brakes. Um, what I did on the other side is I took a screwdriver, okay, and I held it in here, and I'm using a, let me see what size this Allen key is, it's a 5mm on a ratchet, alright. I have bigger ones, but this one seemed to work. You're going to put that in there. Let the screwdriver inside the vent of the rotor, okay, inside this little vent, get it stuck there, all right? And then once that's in place, you'll be able to more easily take this off without having to worry about it slipping. Snap. And boom, it came loose. Oh, wow. Yeah, sometimes these strip, but just make sure if it is filled with rust, you try to clean it out the best you can before you put the Allen key in there. Drilling these out sucks. Uh, I am, I hate it, but uh, I sometimes. Ha sometimes it has to be done. Yeah, I've had to drill these bolts out when they when they're stripped. So, all right. Now that that's done, the next part is going to be taking off the caliper. Before you start that, make sure you have some type of hook or something that's going to hold the caliper up in the air on the shock. All right, and you're going to need a 14 millimeter uh, socket. All right, so we're going to put that on and get these two bolts out on the back. I'll try to show you the best I can here. So we're going to start with these two bolts. Okay. Um, to get those out and loosened. And what I will actually do before I do that is I like to loosen the caliper up if it's tight. This one's already pretty loose. It's not binded, but you can put a screwdriver in there and pull it more, and that'll give you more breathing room. And if you want, you could turn the wheel this way if your other wheel's off the ground. So I'll do that so you get a better look.
All right, see, so I've got the caliper hanging up here on a hook. That way I'm not putting all the strain on the, uh, on the hose itself. And if we take a look at this, not a lot of meat left on the pad, but what also is important to realize is that the back of the rotor is just rusted out, right? So we've got all these rust rings where it's not contacting good. You can see that on the pad. These are just smoked, all right? So get your caliper off. If you're just doing pads, you can skip some of the next stuff I'm doing, but if you want rotors too, you're gonna take all this off and uh, next is gonna be that caliper bracket, which I will tell you was very tight on the other side. So it was not, not fun, not fun at all. Let's take these pads out. Yeah. All right, so getting off the caliper bracket. So if you look, these are actually called E-Torx bolts. Um, again, I'll try to show you these bolts, these two bolts right here, here and here, they're E-Torx. Uh, I believe it's actually a size 20. However, um, if you don't have that, I didn't have one that went up to an E-20. A 12.60 millimeter socket fits it super snug and doesn't have any play at all. That's what I used on the other side and that's what I'm gonna use here. So 16 millimeter 12 point will work or I believe it's an E-20. Uh, size socket. Now I just need to get my cheater bar because these are really tight. Just not gonna have them. No, they're tight, tight. When I did these on the other side, they had red thread locker. Actually, this side wasn't as tight. That other side was snug. You said red thread locker? Yeah. Well, that's All right, guys, so both the bolts are out, so there's nothing stopping this rotor from coming off. Uh, so long as you've gotten that one single bolt out, Maybe. these things tend to be stuck on there because they rust around the hub. So you're gonna wanna get a hammer and just give it a few love taps, spin it. A few love taps, spin it. And just keep doing that till it comes off. It's slowly moving off for me. There we go. That so make sure you're ready to catch it. Hammer. What's that? That don't work. You can always use an air yeah. hammer. Yeah, you can always use an air hammer, but um, be careful. I kept the tire under it while I was doing that, but if you're not strong enough to catch it or you're worried, move the tire, because if this falls on something from like a couple feet, it'll damage it. I had a rotor hit my air hose a couple months ago and it, it, it blew it out, pretty much exploded on me. Uh, but here's why we're changing the rotors. Not because of the front, because if you look at the front, it looks pretty good, but that back is just completely done. There's nothing you can do to save that. Okay, now, sometimes people just quickly throw on the new rotor and, and start setting that on there. I personally go through and I start cleaning this off. You know, I use the wire brush I talked about earlier and just try to get all of this off because if you don't, it could build up and then start making the uh, rotor wobble when you're hitting the brakes. I've only seen it one time. But that's what will happen. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna clean all this off, spray a little brake cleaner, and then I'm gonna take my aluminum anti-seize and coat this part in there. Then I'll grab my rotor, clean it off. I'll talk myself through that, but I'll clean it off and put it back on here. But that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna take me a couple minutes. Uh, and then once I'm comfortable with that, we'll clean the caliber bracket, we'll put the caliber bracket back on, do all the hardware and we'll be in good shape. But let me get this cleaned up and ready for the rotor. Hi guys, I got my new rotor. You know, these usually come wrapped in plastic of some kind because they're all covered in oil. Here's the thing, you wanna make sure you clean that oil off and get that as cleaned off as you can. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna slide this on and then I'm gonna use brake cleaner and a towel to clean it all off because you'll be able to get to that. Uh, what's important is lining this up so that it lets you put that bolt back in, which should be right about there, so. Remember that Allen key bolt? Trust me, you're gonna want this bolt. If not, <laughs> the rotor can slide around, making it really hard to get the wheel studs in. So we're gonna put now, that Now, if down. that bolt was dried out or uh, drilled out, it's not I necessary. No, no, but what'll happen is, is the rotor will spin separately from the hub, 
So you'd have to keep spinning back and forth until the hose line up to put the wheel on. It's really, gotcha. I ran it out on Julius Bug and it was annoying. So, so you definitely want to, I would go that. buy another one if it broke for, for, for this car. Cause you'd be on the side of the road really mad. Um, <laughs> Oh, that's right, because there's no studs to put There's on. nothing keeping the rotor from spinning. Like no I'm studs. saying is, literally, this could spin in the back more and nothing will line up. All right, so cleaning it off, I think it's better just spray a towel. If not, you go through a lot of brake cleaner, and this is like my last can. I don't know how I went through a whole case. Who, 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 um, I haven't that? even been doing, haven't even been doing brake jobs, right, Kevin? I don't know who's done that. Yeah. Somebody must have came in here. Came in here and just used it to clean parts all day. <laughs> yeah, and then painted them. Huh. This leaves a little bit of a film on there of the material of the towel, but it's not terrible. It's better than leaving the oil. And the reason you don't want to leave the oil on there is because the oil will heat up a lot. And if you don't get it cleaned off, it could cause it to get so hot the first time you drive that it warps. And you really, after doing this job, you're not going to want to come back in here and do it again because all that excess oil caused an issue. The oil is there only to keep it from rusting during shipping. I can promise you, these things are going to start rusting right away. They, they rust. It's metal. It's metal that gets hot and is in the weather. It is going to rust. All right. So you see how much comes off of that? I'm going to do one more wipe through. Just so I feel good about it. I might even hit it again before we're done. But the more we get off, the better. Okay, that's good. All right, so new rotor is on. The next part that will go on is the caliper bracket. However, before you put that caliper bracket on, it is important that you clean it. So there's these channels here where the hardware sits. You need to make sure that that's clean. On some cars I do, it is so rusty that I actually have to take a file and clean it out to get the rust built up off. And the reason you have to clean that is because if the hardware can't sit where it's supposed to, it puts extra pressure on the ears of the pads and it won't fit. So I've seen people where they're like, the new pads don't fit anymore. There must be bad pads. Well, no, that's probably not it. It's probably, this is so rusty that it's pushing on the hardware and it's causing the pad not to be able to move and to be super tight. Me and Kevin have seen that before. We had to come in here and file this clean to get the rust out. It really doesn't take much. It doesn't, You'd yeah. You'd be surprised at how Just a little thin rust. piece of metal of rust can cause it to bind up. And if it's binding up, it means the pad will stick and you're gonna ruin your brand new pads and rotors. But see how clean the metal gets? That's good. I don't have an example here to show you of a really bad one, but they can get really bad. All right, so it's dealer's choice next. So this is um, dealer's choice really. I'm gonna put grease underneath of the hardware and put the hardware in and then slide it in and then I'll do my slide pins. None of them are seized, um, but I'll do my slide pins. If they were seized, I'd do them outside of here, but wait until it's bolted on. But it's your choice whether you want to put grease under here. I'm going to because it's habitual, but you will see people all over say different things about it. It's not needed, it's a waste. My thought is that when you have clean metal like this, the grease will keep water from sitting in there and rusting, thus making the next job easier. Sometimes I do underneath, sometimes I don't. But in this case, this is pretty clean metal and I'm afraid it's gonna rust. So I'm gonna put it under there. Did you do the slide pins yet? I did not do the slide pins yet, but I will be doing that next. I always get pads with new hardware. I don't reuse the old crap. So we're gonna pop this in. Make sure it seats in there good. I still gotta do my slide pin, but I'm gonna do them while it's in the car. All right, so we've cleaned the hardware, we've, we've cleaned the bracket, got it all ready. Um, let me just make sure you can see what I'm doing. Got it all clean, new hardware's in. I'm gonna pop it in there. Uh, and I am gonna use on these original bolts, which I'm also gonna state, some of the manuals say that you should replace these, but these bolts look clean. There's no messed up threads. I'm gonna reuse them. I'm gonna use blue thread locker on them to do it. So let me just get some blue thread locker on there. It's probably all I'll need. And I am going to pop this back on.
tag, both of them are snug. Now I'll bring the cork wrench in, which is set to, so it looks like 130 foot pounds. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. I think I had, I, I had said it when I did the other side. And it looks like it is 130. Again, I'll correct it, whatever it looks like on here. Let's go back and forth. You sure you're gonna be all right? Yeah, I'm not listening yet, so. It's yeah. really spooled up though. I didn't know that that spooled up. So I actually took it too well. Yeah. All right, caliber bracket is torqued to spec. All right, we know that's nice and tight. We're not worried about it now. Now we can move on. So, next step is going to be cleaning these slide pins. We're going to pull them out one at a time. We're going to use that same one we used for the brake cleaner and clean them up. Uh, if you don't have like a big uh, tub of this stuff, you can buy little packets from AutoZone. It really depends on how often you do brakes. I do them enough where it's better for me to spend 20 bucks on that or whatever it costs than to keep buying those $2 packets when I do it. Because this, this is going to last me a while. A long time. The top one's in. The oh, bottom one's in, sorry. Check the top one. All right, so sometimes there's little rubber pieces on here. This one doesn't have it. I don't know if it's supposed to. It hasn't had it for the years that they've been driving this, so. That might be normal, but if yours has rubber and it's in bad shape, you might want to replace it. But there's no rubber on this, and I don't, I, we've never done front pads and rotors on this, I don't think so. Um, I think the last people to do it was the dealer right before it was bought years ago. So maybe they didn't put it back on, or maybe there isn't any, but. Let's see. All right. Everything is back in and good. Don't overdo the grease. All right, let's move on to the brake pads. All right, so the old pads we took off had like a different inner and outer. These do not, they are the same. Uh, I will say that for the squealers, um, I'm gonna put them on the back pad. That's how they were originally, and that's how I usually see them on cars. So if yours isn't pre-installed, or even if they are, I suggest you put that pad on the back because that is the one that I tend to see wear faster. So. If you're actually somebody that changes your pads before each of your rotors, um, put them on the back. If you get enough, put them on the front too, but sometimes they interfere with the caliper. I'm gonna put grease on the ears of the pads, just so I know they slide and hopefully stops the grease. And I'm gonna slide this pad in the back. And it moves, so if you look at this, you want it to be able to move like this, this is normal. You don't want it to be clanking around, but you don't want it to be tight. I should not have to hammer these pads into place. If you do, something is wrong either you got to clean the caliper bracket a little more um it is possible you got bad pads but highly unlikely highly unlikely it is almost guaranteed to be a um issue with the caliper bracket that if you leave them stuck on there like that you're just destroying a brand new road oh yeah yeah you'll tear it up right away it will be it will be junk um let me take you up a bit all right so now pads are ready hardware uh, the Push pins are clean. This is already torqued to spec. Now we need to compress the old, um, or the, the existing caliper so that we can slide it on. So I use this little cheap tool. I do have a, a pistol grip one that does it as well, but for these smaller cars, this thing tends to work pretty well. What we'll do is I'll set the caliper like this. I will take my old pad and then I will just slide this into place until it's fully seats the piston so don't want to put any pressure on the hose but i am just well you can kind of see pushing this back in until it's good to go now if you go to try to push this in it won't go uh you might have a different kind of issue and then you might see with mine as i'm pushing it in it's developing an air pocket so you can either take care of that when you're done or you can pop it up as you push it in I'm just gonna push it in and then I'll go back. But anyway, if it doesn't go in, it's a good chance you either have a seized caliper or the brake hose itself is pinched. Um, you can tell the difference if you can't get the caliper to go in with a tool like this and opening the bleeder lets you, well then the caliper's not seized. But if you try to compress the caliper, open the bleeder and it doesn't help, um, then it more, more likely is the caliper. So uh, I'm going to use a little flathead to get in here. 
to pull that seal up to let the air out. Yep, I just heard it go, and now that'll sit back down there. So that's all good to go. Another thing I do is I'll clean this out, make sure it's good. And I will also put some grease on where this contacts the pad. So that means the ears of the caliper on the inside and the caliper piston itself, because it all touches there. Again, you can choose not to do this. I've always done this and everybody always comes back for more work. Not the same work being bad, just more work in general. I'm gonna slide that on. It should fit fine. You may have to play with your slide pins to get it to seat. All right, and then we're gonna take our original caliper bolts and the dogs wanna fight and get them started. Now I looked up torque specs for these and it says 25 foot pounds. That sounds about right. Usually it's like 18 to 25 is what I see on this. Dominic, would you be quiet? I know you're jealous, cut it out. Okay, so we'll get this hook out of here. Let me get my torque wrench, which is set to 25 foot pounds. And we're gonna tighten this up. Go back and forth at first before I go fully tight. Twenty-five foot pounds ain't much, guys. Okay, and then because I don't, I trust torque, right? But because I'm always paranoid, I will go through and just feel it by hand and make sure it feels about as tight as I would generally get it. I want to find out that it's super loose. But, all right, so let's take a look here and see what's left. Brake hardware, uh, the brakes are clean. Everything's good to go. I'm going to go through, clean the, cap, clean the rotor off one more time in case any grease happened to get on it. Then I'm going to put the wheel on. But that is the entire job. It's the same thing on the other side. Torque everything to spec. And then before you put the car in park, you're going to pump the brakes. But I'll keep filming while I clean this and put the wheel on. But that's the job, guys. Simple tools, simple time, get it up in the air and get it done. All right guys, that's the job. Now I got the wheel back on. I'm gonna lower it to the ground and torque these to spec. It's probably like 90 foot pounds or something for the wheel. Again, I'll correct it in the, you know, beneath what I'm saying right now, you'll see what the actual torque spec is. But uh, I always use the impact on low to put the wheel on. And then when I get to the ground, I'll torque it to spec. I don't trust an impact. I never do that. I will never send it on axle nuts or anything because God forbid you're on the side of the road and you can't get this thing off. And you're gonna call me and say, you're the last one to put the tire on. I don't wanna hear that. So. Uh, anyway, guys, please like, subscribe, share the video if it was helpful to you. Uh, I got a couple other Dodge Dart videos, including the starter, the alternator, uh, a known bad ground issue on these things. So you know, the Dart seems like it's been my go-to. But uh, thanks again, guys, and have a good one.